Today I'm going to show you how to make this uh, beautiful card that I get asked a lot about. It's uh, using this Altenew Ambridge Bouquet 3D Embossing Folder. And what I do is I put ink on the inside of this run it through and then I come back and I uh, use some spun sugar distress ink and paint um, the flower petals. And then after that, I fussy cut it, put it back into the folder and then rerun it just to get the dimension again. This is something that I learned from an Altenew tutorial and I believe it was by JC Gasper who has some really, really beautiful floral cards. So you should check that out. But today I'm using the Ambridge Bouquet 3D folder by Altenew. So to start with, I use this uh, tea dye distress ink and I rub it onto this folder on the inside. You know what the top is because Altenew prints the name on the top of their folder. So on the reverse side of this, I smooth this card. I um, rub this ink all over. It doesn't really matter where you get it because you're going to end up fussy cutting the uh, image out. So if a little bit gets on the background or the leaves, it doesn't matter because I'm not going to cut that part out. So I don't know if you can see, but basically all the highlight areas are going to get the ink and then when I run it through the embossing folder it'll be pressed into the paper. So then I have this 65 pound paper that I cut to six by six because that's the size of the folder. And you could probably see it a little bit better that the ink has gone into all the areas where the folder was raised and then once I run it through the big shot it'll be pushed into the paper. So I ran it through the Big Shot about three times back and forth. Uh, I didn't miss my paper. Some people do that. I didn't do that because I inked the folder with Distress Ink and if you use even a little bit of water and it be, it'll beat up and it'll leave splotches on the paper, which I didn't want. So I usually don't miss the paper anyway. I know a lot of people like to do that. This is a lightweight paper. It's only 65 pounds. It's just Michael's paper. I find it to be very smooth and it's inexpensive. And for something like this where I'm not gonna be using a ton of water, I don't really need to use a watercolor paper or a mixed media paper, which is much more expensive. I just use something inexpensive. There are a couple blotches I got on here where the ink pulled up, but that's okay. Once I use this Distress Ink, which is spun sugar, it should um, hide some of those flaws. So I just put a little bit on my glass mat and with a little water, I just go through and add a little bit of pink to the, um, I think it's called tea dye ink, which is a little bit brownish. I just want to give it a real pretty pink glow here. And I'm pulling a little bit of the, the brown, the tea dye up into it too, to give it more of an antique look rather than a very strong um, pink. This is probably a case where it would be great to have a full-size pad because um, I wouldn't have to keep pressing down my mini pad. I'd have more ink on a large pad. So this is basically what I do. You know, I just start at the base. I move up. I don't paint the entire petal. I leave some white area because that will give a prettier look. It'll look more like a highlight. The 
other thing that would be good is if I had a um, Distress Reinker because that tends to be um, a little bit more pigmented and uh, looks. So after I said to myself, I it would have been nice to have a Distress Reinker, I looked and I did have a Spun Sugar Distress Reinker. So this is going to be much easier to uh, color with. You can see there's a lot more here. It's probably a little darker than I want. So I finished painting it with the Distress Reinker, just from the glass mat, paintbrush with some water, and just starting from the base and using a little bit more water to pull it up, not, not putting too much of the ink down there. It takes very little to color this, and you can see there's a great deal of depth just from the tie, tea dye, I keep calling it tie dye, tea dye ink, um, which is the brown, and then using that pink kind of softens that brown edge. So what I would do next is uh, take my scissors and fussy cut the flowers just around these edges. Okay, so I've cut the flowers out and I'm gonna put it back into the embossing folder. And when you put it in here, you'll be able to kind of feel where it, it'll kind of lock into place where the grooves are. Just be sure that you have it kind of set in the right place. You can also see by looking at the edge, mine's a little bit off. Just move it down a little bit, whichever way, just so that you kind of get it get it in the spot. I think you can see pretty much here that I have it uh, looks like in the right place. Kind of look around the edges. All right, so I'm gonna rerun this through the big shot and I'll be right back. So I re-embossed my image. Now I'm going to stamp the leaves on the background. So originally this card was uh, six by six, which is too big. Um, I don't have an envelope for it, so I'm going to have to make one. So I decided for this card, since I'm making it over, I'm going to make it to fit a five by six and a half card. Um, just easier to mail. I have envelopes already for those. So the image is going to be something like this. And then I will have leaves coming off here, like in this one. I won't have a space to put happy birthday, but I could always uh, adhere uh, some kind of sentiment right here over the flowers or down in the corner, whichever one. Either way, I think it's going to look good, and I just think it's going to be easier to have an envelope for it. So I'm just kind of lining this up, and I'm going to mat it later in this green cardstock and so I have a couple inks here one is shabby shutters distress and this is an old memento ink I have and it's called pear tart and it came in a set this does appear to be closer so I may end up using that one but they're both good choices for the leaves so I'm just kind of placing and I want the leaves to be in the corner but also to go off the edge of the card I think it looks good that way so that's just being removed. This is the actual panel. So I'm gonna go ahead and stamp that in the Misty. This is an old stamp. Um, I'll link it below. It's by Alta New. It's the original one that I used. I think it's called Wallpaper Art. I'm pretty sure. So I'm gonna ink this off. Looks. Not bad. Do it again, it looks like, especially that top corner. Okay. 
So that looks pretty nice. So that'll be like that. I'm gonna pop this up with some fun foam that I'm gonna place underneath. Um, and so in that original card, I did stamp a little bit more of the leaves underneath. So I'll go ahead and do that too. And that's just the same stamp, just it could be repositioned. I'll just clean it off and um, stamp the last parts. So I'm positioning this um, to trail off into that corner too. And I'm looking at it and I'll go here. Just a little bit of leaves will show because this is as big as the mat is. I mean, the uh, panel is it stops right here. But you can see here that if I stamp this part, it'll overlap what I've already stamped. So I'm not going to ink this little section right here. It'll look fine. You won't even notice. I just have to remember which part not to ink. And I always put a piece of paper. I don't like getting my Misty all dirty. I think later on, you know, I could end up getting some ink on another piece of paper, and I don't like that. So this is just scrap paper I keep underneath to keep everything clean. So you can see I didn't bother um, inking that one little section right here, and it looks fine. Gonna go like that. You're not even gonna see it. I did move the stamp a little bit, but it'll be covered. Okay. Just went a little bit down here. I'm gonna move this again. Get it right up against the corner. Clean my stamp. a little bit I think I'll just get a little bit here just kind of check it out how much I shouldn't be able to see and that should be pretty good so let's be sure it's in the right position this time You know, I think that looks pretty good. It doesn't have to be super dark. So, let's see how this is. Not bad. Maybe something right here. That's pretty good. Okay. 
Okay, so I have my panel all done. I'm going to just use some tape runner, put it on the back. You know, and then I usually, just to get these little corners down, because it drives me crazy if they stick up, I just put little dabs of glue, sometimes all the way down the edge. Then you really have to smooth it out, either your finger or a little scrap piece of paper. I just like it to stay down. So this is just cut a quarter inch larger. Just gonna go ahead and put this on here. Hopefully it'll be straight. So a little fuzzy. Okay, so that's that. This is gonna go like this. I'm gonna put some foam tape on there and then it's just harder to adhere the whole panel to the card if you've got something that's sticking up a lot. So, of course, I just ran out of tape runner, I think. This tape runner is not that good. I wouldn't recommend this one. I, I bought a lot of refills for this Tombow and it's just not that good. I have to find another one that I like better. It just has all these areas that just don't have any adhesive on it. I'm not exactly sure why. Just makes for a lot of waste. Yeah, I could feel it's finally some adhesive here. So again, I'll just put a little dot of glue there in all the corners. Just so it doesn't pucker up. Don't like it when you can see the glue. Be sure that you are adhering the card to the panel so that it opens the right way. Okay, so I have this big piece of fun foam. I buy these big sheets. It's I think it's a dollar, a dollar forty nine at Michael's. Um, I would rather do that than buy rolls of foam tape, which are so expensive. And I don't think I really want to spend my money on that. There's other things I'd rather spend my money on. I've said this before. I would rather buy more stamps and dies. But see, I just cut it like that. So basic shape. Just got to be sure that it doesn't show through. And then those corners, so I'll just have to trim it a little bit more. But not hard. And look how much fun foam there is. I mean, I have enough here for a while. So you can see this, it's going to fit right here without showing through. And then I just need a little bit of extra pieces. And I just stick them on like this. If you don't want to pop it, you don't have to. If you want to use scrap paper, I know Jennifer McGuire talks a lot about that. She just uses um, old scrap paper she saves, so cardstock she saves, and she just layers it up that way. It saves money and uh, you're not using so much foam. But I just feel like this is a little bit easier for me. I like the way it looks and I like a whole big piece rather than little pieces of tape. I think when you send it through the mail that way, it um, gets smashed and uneven. So I'm gonna just go ahead. Usually what I do, when there's a big piece like this, I do use both tape runner and glue. I just, <laughs> I, I'm just one of those people that feels like you have to be sure that nothing is gonna fall apart. So I would let this dry. I usually take an acrylic block 
stick it on top just to keep it in place. Um, and I think that that usually is good enough. I'll let that sit for a few minutes, then I'll do the same thing. I'll put more tape runner, glue, and then I'll place it right on my card. Unfortunately, I forgot to take a photo of the completed card, but here's the original. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Thank you.